Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on the View From The Crowd YouTube channel and today we are going to be looking at the round of 16 for the UEFA Europa League. Of course we kind of hit that point in the sort of in between these two European competitions where um, obviously because there's more teams in the Europa League they go to a round of 32 and not a round of 16 like the Champions League so they have this kind of extra um, two weeks of games um, and it kind of just knocks the whole sort of nice um sort of like rhythm out of these sort of european games i don't know, I don't know how i was going to describe that but anyway um of course the champions league is still very much goes on and it goes on in its staggered format um and the round of 16 is being played over four weeks and but you know in the europa league instead of having that staggered they all play at once hence why we get this situation occur um so yeah, the round of 16 draw was made today. This is probably going to go out in a few days' time. So um, obviously it might be old news and you all might already know um, each fixture. However, I'm going to be going through each one and giving my predictions. Now in the round of 32, instead of going through all 16 games, I just decided to do the British teams. And I did fairly well with my predictions. I only got two wrong. Um, of course... Arsenal um, managed to claw back, um, well, <laughs> to do an amazing turnaround to um, to beat Benfica, and Leicester unfortunately went out to Salvia Prague. Salvia Prague, very very good performances against Leicester, and Leicester sort of naturally with the injury problems that they're having, it was going to be a bit tough for them to really push on in the competition. But you know they give it a good shot and fair play. But um, you know how the Spurs went through fairly easily. Rangers, like I said, I said Rangers would go through. They have gone through. And Manchester United went through with no real problems against Real Sociedad. However, the next round might be a little, little, probably a bit more um, difficult for Manchester United. And we'll get, well, we may as well get straight into this. And we do start with our first game, which is Manchester United versus AC Milan. Now for United fans, this is probably the worst draw you could have even possibly wanted. Um, yeah, it's really, really not good for um, well, for, <laughs> for Manchester United. Um, I don't know, I think AC Milan is probably, I don't know, at least the second or third best team in the competition this year. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be a tough one. Um, you know, they're doing fairly well in the um, the old Serie A, uh, AC Milan. Um, Zlatan, even at the grand age of 39, is still hammering goals um, in Italy, which is just absolutely remarkable. And um, he's definitely going to be a threat against what it can be quite a shaky defence of Manchester United. Um, the likes of Lindelof, uh, Harry Maguire, they're, you know, centre-back which um, can be a little bit um, inconsistent and when you're playing against someone like Zlatan Ibrahimovic you're going to have to be on your toes um, but you know United absolutely breezed with the first leg the second leg um, it was a little less convincing with the nil-nil draw but um, it, they'd already done enough in the first leg so it wasn't really sort of expecting them to sort of go out all out and try and win the game because Let's face it. When you're winning, when you're at four 0 from the first league, you're not really going to be playing your best. You're going to probably get a little bit complacent, and they managed to see out the game with a nil nil draw. But um, as for who's going to go through, I think it's a tough one. Um, but you know, I think, I think it, it, I think it's going to be AC Milan, but expect it to be very, very close. Um, I think it could swing either way, but I'm going to put my bet down as AC Milan to go through to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Next up, we've got Ajax versus Young Boys. Oh, this is such a weird name for a football team. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty um, obvious, um, at least in my mind, who I think will probably go through in that game, and that is going to be Ajax. Um, sort of no reason to doubt them. I'm sh sure young boys are a great team in Switzerland, but <laughs> um, sort of on a European stage, very rarely do they impress or even get that far. So um, 
yeah, I think Ajax are definitely the team to look out for in that fixture and um, is the team that I would expect to go through in that game. Um, but you never know with Ajax. Ajax are so weird. You know, only two years ago they were in a um, Champions League semi-final and it's just, they seem to just peter off and just, you know, it's strange. But um, yeah, my money on Ajax to go through. Next up is Dynamo Kiev versus Villarreal. Um, Villarreal doing very well. Um, cruise through um, this competition. Uh, well, the last round against um, RB Salzburg by winning 4-1 on Agra. For um, uh, Dynamo Kiev, it's a little bit closer. Their 1-0 win against Club Bruges was enough to see them go through 2-1 on aggregate. Um, and honestly, I think in my just my humble opinion, I think it is pretty. I think it's probably going to be Villarreal who go through. They are a incredibly good side, and I don't really have much reason to doubt them. Um, you know, Spanish sides tend to do quite well in these sort of competitions. You see how well Sevilla um, just absolutely push through in the Europa League year on year, and it's usually the same with most Spanish teams. You know, it's incredibly high standard in La Liga, and um, you know, you can say that it's just Real Madrid, uh, Barcelona and Atletico. However, you know, these sort of teams, Sevilla, Villarreal, Real Sociedad, they are teams that can compete on a European stage. So I would definitely say it's going to be, yeah, I think it's definitely going to be Villarreal. Who's going to go through it in that fixture? Next up, we have Salvia Prague versus Rangers. Salvia Prague, of course, knocks out Leicester, while um, Rangers really went hard... Um, to knock out Antwerp and they, they got there. They got there in the end. Um it was it was a bit of a battle for um for uh Stephen Gerrard's side but they did incredibly well and they got through. However, Salvia Prague when I watched them against Leicester they really did seem to be a lot better team than I originally predicted them to be. I did say it was going to be a tough game for Leicester and if Leicester were to get through then that would be able to be a huge push for their Europa League campaign. However, they didn't win and Salvia Prague were just too good and I think if they're going to be too good for Leicester then they're going to be too good for Rangers. I know Rangers have a lot of momentum behind them. They're probably going to win this bit, um, the Scottish uh, Premiership but I think this game is just going to be a little bit too far and I think it's going to go the way of Salvia Prague. So in that picture I'm sorry Rangers fans but Salvia Prague to knock out Rangers. Next up is Dynamo Zagreb versus Tottenham Hotspur. Um, Dynamo and Zagreb knocked out um, Krasnodar. Um, I have some experience of watching Krasnodar from the way that Chelsea played them in the Champions League group stage. And to see Zagreb knock them out 4-2 over the, both legs wasn't too much of a surprise that the Krasnodar weren't a brilliant team. Um, I think they were probably very excited with the fact they were in the Champions League, but they never really stood a chance and really didn't stand a chance again here. Um, so it was quite an easy fixture for to grab. The same can go for Tottenham. Tottenham had Wolfsburg in the in the last round. Um, convincingly beat them 8-1. I did say it was probably going to be quite an easy fixture for Tottenham. And, you know, un very unsurprisingly, they did the business and they got well, straight through. Um, I think to grab could be a bit more of a tougher opponent for... Um, for Spurs, but yet again, I have very little doubt in Jose Mourinho and his um, side that they won't, you know, that they will be able to make it through to the next round of the champ uh, Europa League. Um, sorry. Um, so, yeah, with that said, I think, yeah, Tottenham to knock out Dynamo Zagreb, I think it's fairly obvious. You know, Tottenham may not be playing the best football that we've ever seen in the world, uh, especially in the Premier League this season, but, you know, Jose is a trophy magician. He wins trophies left, right and centre with most clubs that he's... Um, well, with every club that he's been at. Um, Tottenham seem to be the only exception so far. Um, but, you know, he's been in that job just over a year now. So, um, yeah, it's, the trophies are, are bound to come at some point. Of course, they are in the, um, in the final of the League Cup, uh, which is taking place next month. Um, and whether or not they can win the Europa League is still very much debatable but um, I think they're definitely going to give it a shot and I definitely reckon they're going to get to the quarterfinals so um, Tottenham Hotspur to knock out Dynamo is a grip. Next up we have well, 
a feature from last season, Olympiacos versus Arsenal. Um, yeah, it was Olympiacos who knocked out Arsenal um, last year. Awful football from Arsenal in last year's um, Europa League, which saw them uh, knocked out um, through a couple of late um, goals from Olympiacos. Um, and... You know, Arsenal did well. Arsenal did well to knock out Benfica. I did uh, think it was going to be a little bit too much for them, and I thought Benfica would be able to get the better of them. Obviously, I was wrong, and they're still here, which gives me a little bit more confidence in them going into this next round. Um, obviously, I'm a Chelsea fan. I'm going to be very quick to dismiss Arsenal and put them down. But, you know, when they come out with performances like these and knock out um, Benfica, who are a decent Portuguese side, I can't deny the fact that they're, you know, they're doing well. You know, it's just it'd just be too arrogant of me. So I have to recognise that. But then Olympiacos are also playing very well. I think this could be a game, again, that could go either way. You know, Olympiacos know what it takes to be Arsenal. However, you know, I don't expect them to be complacent when it comes to um, these sorts of games. I think they'll definitely know that the Arsenal that they played, you know, almost a year ago well over a year ago now um because of the delay we had in the season um you know it's going to be very different to the Arsenal that they're playing you know Arsenal seem to be getting back on their horse you know with um players returning from injury and you know various other players stepping up and um the the results are coming through so I think it could be incredibly incredibly different Game than what we saw, but um, I'm going to stick with the winners of last year. I think Olympiacos can do it, um, but I will not be surprised at all in the slightest if Arsenal prevail. Next up, we have Granada versus the Swedish club Molde. Um, I think uh, both of these teams have come through in what I would consider quite unlikely circumstances. I think this is quite a good matchup. Um, it was uh, Mulder who knocked out Hoffenheim, a team which I thought would be, you know, the ones to knock them out. And then, out of absolute nowhere, Granada knocked out Napoli, a team which I thought definitely going to get through against them. But no, they have proved us wrong. And honestly, a great job. Honestly, I cannot... Um, you know, say anything bad because, you know, congratulations. Um, but, you know, out of the two, um, I, I do find it fairly difficult to pick a, a, pick a winner, I will be completely honest. Um, of course, not really knowing too much about either side on a, um, on a domestic level. Um, I'm not really in tune with uh, my Swedish football, I will admit. Um, this is where... Mulder isn't even Sweden. No, they're not. They're from sodding Norway, aren't they? Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. Um, honestly, it feels like tossing a coin because I don't really know much about either team. But, um, based on their performances in the competition so far, um, from what I've looked at, I'm going to go with Granada. And finally, we move on to Shakhtar Donetsk versus Roma. This, this is what I call a typical Europa League game. This is an absolute corker of a game in the Europa League. Um, yeah, um, absolutely um, great fixtures. Um, well, a great fixture. And um, one where I think it could really be a really good match to watch. Um, Roma... Um, sort of breezing through the last round so did Shakhtar against Tel Aviv um, and it's kind of no surprise that um, either of these two teams are still in the competition at stage and if they were playing different teams there'd be no reason to argue why both teams wouldn't be able to get to the quarterfinals um, but when they're playing together it makes an entirely different um, sort of question to be asked because which one of the two are going to go through? Um, honestly, like my, while I know that it's going to be a good game and I can always expect a good game, sort of my, my sort of my head and my heart sort of 
you know, slightly leans towards Roma as being, you know, the team who is going to get through. I think, you know, they are an incredibly, you know, solid team. Um, they've got some amazing players. And, you know, I think it's definitely sort of not completely out of the question that they can, you know, get quite far in this competition. Um, so, I think, for me, Roma are the team that I'm going to, that I'm going to pick to go through. But, like I've said with a couple of other games, expect it to be a good one. It could go either way. I could be com well, proven completely wrong and look absolutely foolish. But um, we shall see. But for me, Roma to go through. So that's it. That is all eight games in this year's Europa League um, round of 16. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts uh, down below. Who you think, uh, which predictions you think I've probably going to get spot on which ones do you think i'm going to get horribly wrong um let me definitely let me know down in the comments down below um your thoughts and your predictions i'd love to hear it love to read um so yeah um if you did like this video make sure to leave a like if you're new here make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already followed my blog that link will also be down in the description below i recently posted um kind of a thinker article um, about the Premier League top six. So if you want to check that out down in the description below, um, I think it's a really good read and it's I think it's quite a good sort of centre of debate uh, with the current state of the Premier League. So definitely check that out down below. So guys, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Louis Edwards. Thank you and goodbye.